Back in the 60s, moviegoers took a fantastic voyage inside the human body, Inject. courtesy of Hollywood. We stand in the middle of infinity between outer and inner space. What was science fiction then is now a virtual science fact. We can take the data and we can use VR technologies and fuse them together and actually allow people to experience it in the same way that we see in these sci-fi movies. Wow, this is amazing. You're in the vessel yourself. I know, right inside it. You've been miniaturized and now you're inside the cancer cell. In this story, we reveal how virtual reality is providing Australian scientists, doctors and patients with a striking new tool for research and education. Wow, so it feels like I'm standing on the surface of an alien planet. It's actually a completely immersive process. It's a place that you go. And I argue that that actually will change the paradigm of education. plant or animal are made up of cells, from the biggest and most complex organisms to the tiniest of creatures. The cell, this is the basic building block of life. There are so many things we don't understand about how a cell works. And so I always make the analogy to the solar system. We're all interested in how the solar system works, and yet we have this structure that our bodies are made of that we still don't understand all those mysteries of the cell. One of the biggest mysteries for cell biologist Rob Parton is unravelling the processes that can cause a cell to turn cancerous. To do this, he uses electron microscopy to capture ultra-high magnification snapshots of how a cell works. In this chamber, we have our cancer cell, and that's sliced. And each of those slices that's removed is a thousandth the thickness of a human hair. In a painstakingly slow process, over a thousand slices are imaged and compiled into a movie. And that's the starting point for this cell's singular journey to Sydney, where the magic between art and science begins. Rob's images will be brought to life by Dr John McGee, the director of the 3D Visualisation Aesthetics Lab at the University of New South Wales. As designers and artists, we look at the data sets. We don't necessarily see science. We see landscape. We see shape, we see colour. So basically visualising the invisible. John's first step is to build a 3D model from the two-dimensional images. This particular cell is a migratory cancer cell and we can move through the cell membrane and we can see right into the cell. To often make a leap, we have to add things that maybe the data doesn't have. We had to add um, walkways, so you could walk from different aspects of the cell, from the nucleus to the endosomes. We also had to add lighting, and also because the data was so complex, we had to think of it on different levels, almost like, uh, akin to a computer game. Then it's back up to Brisbane for a road test of the prototype with Rob. Wow, this is amazing. This is the nucleus that contains all the genetic information. We can see these worm-like structures. These are the mitochondria. So these are generating the energy to be used by the cell. We think it is obviously a fantastic educational tool to be able to walk around inside the cell, put your head inside a mitochondria and have a look around. This is fantastic. But I think this is also the future, because what we'd like to be able to do is take our molecules, molecules that are mutated in different forms of cancer, put those into the context of a virtual reality cell, so we can see how they work. The project also involves material scientists like Dr Angus Johnston. He's focusing on how to deliver drug treatments for disease that are loaded inside tiny nanoparticles. 
One of the key things to try and improve delivery is to be able to get it to the cell, but then to get it to the right spot in the cell. So the endosomes and the lysosomes are these structures here, so they, they look quite empty to start off with. So this is the first stage where we've reconstructed it in a 3D wireframe. Mm. And then we've got the late and early endosomes as yellow and that mm -hmm. purple colour. The endosomes and lysosomes act like stomachs, digesting and destroying what comes into them. So what we need to be able to do is to work out a way of how we can get nanoparticles that have been loaded with drugs out of the stomachs of the cell and into the cytoplasm or into the nucleus where they can have a therapeutic activity. Gradually, the cell and its many components take shape. Fantastic. Culminating in a 3D virtual reality breast cancer cell like no other. The level of detail you can see once you get in here, it's, it's unbelievable. I can see the cell surface directly beneath me. For the first time, Angus can literally sidle up to a nanoparticle as it touches down on the cell surface and watch it disappear inside. Over here, I can now see a large wave forming on the surface of the cell, and it's going to take inside the cell multiple nanoparticles. Being able to clearly visualise how particles enter the cell in different ways is an essential research tool. As we develop our better understanding of how nanoparticles move throughout the cell, we can add these nanoparticles to the model of the cell and, and so we can see where uh, these materials are going and it's much easier to communicate on that level. Once inside, it's time to get to the guts. So this is the endosome, so this is where all our particles end up. When we look in two dimensions, they look like they're separate little bubbles, but now I can actually look around and see, and I can see the interconnected nature of them. It almost feels like I should be able to taste the water as I pop my head inside and outside these compartments. It's clearly a grouping adventure, but does it hold up as a teaching tool? You can see all that structure and you can look at it from any angle. There's no predefined, oh, this is what I think I need to be looking at. You can decide, well, this is interesting, but I can see something else over there. And that's just as interesting. And you can find out um, new information by exploring yourself. Just like in the movie, The Fantastic Voyage, the team have also entered the tricky territory of the brain. Dr. Michaels, the channel is getting awfully narrow. Yes, we're entering a capillary. Try to stay in the middle. Mm. It takes a truly adventurous spirit to look into one's own brain. But this is exactly what a team of medical experts are doing with virtual reality to educate stroke victims. The blues take quite a bit of yeah. effort to... I'll have a little rest break after those. Victor is recovering well from a stroke that hit him seven months ago. I knew that my weight was a problem, although I did have severe difficulty doing anything about it. And I did have um, diabetes, but not seriously. I thought I was keeping everything under control enough that I wouldn't have the problem, but I was wrong. Welcome to event management, more specifically. So this will be really good as a baseline for us yeah. to know what we're aiming for. Intensive speech and occupational therapy sessions have paid huge dividends for Victor, but it's a long, hard road to recovery. You must use one of these case studies for your assessment tasks. About 50,000 people a year suffer with stroke, and then stroke um, doesn't go away. It's like a chronic illness in that the risks of repeated strokes are high, and a lot of people live with stroke-related disability. Associate Professor Stephen Foe is Victor's rehabilitation physician at St Vincent's Hospital. His team is a key player in the virtual reality project. We had been working on this research to look at people's blood vessels, taking their MRIs and CT scans and creating a bespoke or a tailored immersive experience, essentially walking them down their own blood vessels so that we could show them how the stroke occurred. And see the build-up of the arterial plaque. With guidance from the medical team, a narrative emerges. 
how do you walk around your own blood vessel? Yeah, because if you just put the raw data, it would be very difficult to interpret. And we see things that we can actually tell a story with and engage people in what they're looking at in a different way to just pure science. So it's almost meaning beyond words. Oh, the blood's coming through. So you're right in there now. Witnessing the conditions that caused his clot could help Victor avoid the risk of another stroke. You're going to see that the wall will change colour and it will start to deposit this sort of yellow plaque on it. And if you turn to your left, can you see how narrow that is compared to the one on the other side? This is what's led to your stroke. Uh, the diabetes and the smoking and the poor diet has made that narrower and narrower. It's, I think, very valuable because I can understand exactly what happened now and it's given me uh, a much deeper insight into what was happening inside my head. And that's the blockage up there. Do you want to go right up to Yes, it? right up. Can you see it blocked there? Completely blocked, yeah. yeah. And at the time that this was occurring, you were losing power in your leg and your arm and you'd lost your speech. Yes, it's in increased my motivation to continue with um, my, my exercise and uh, health routine and making sure that I don't have it happen again. While still in its infancy, this technology has the potential to take virtual explorers of the future on a journey into the wonders of all living things. I feel that immersive technology is at that very early phase. It's a bit clunky, you've got to wear the headsets, but I think that the applications are so enormous and palpable that the research will be driven by them. I think our fantastic voyage is only just beginning. I think with this research, the, the sky is the limit as to where we can take it. I would say we could even go one step further, that we could actually go in our body, not just when we're sick, but actually go because we just can't. <laughs>